trying to play a little bit of Black Bottom Blues there, uh, also known lately as Steel City Blues, if you listen to the Steel City Jug Slammers out of Birmingham, Alabama. And I was playing with uh, these new uh, finger picks, courtesy of ClawJam.com. I want to show them off real quick. Here's hoping that y'all can see that. Real nice finger pick. You can down pick or up pick with them. Metal thumb pick to match. Anyhow, that's enough of that. I'm trying to play with picks a little bit lately, but the main reason for this video is I want to update y'all on my latest banjo build. I'm pretty excited about it. It's basically looking like it's going to be my first minstrel banjo. Um, this is basically something that I uh, came up with from looking at pictures on the banjo database. And I'm going to link to the banjo database uh, down in the description. So y'all need to go check that website out. It's something curated by uh, John Cohen in, in a partnership with Duke University. There's a lot of great photographs of what they call what we call early banjos from 1870 and earlier. And uh, so I made this one as a long neck, you might see. It's a long neck. It's basically like a Seeger length neck. And I know a lot of the early banjos I see had longer than usual necks and a big pot. This is a 13 inch hoop here. It's a hardwood, bent wood hoop I cut from a drum shell. And this is a nice cherry neck. I'm still getting sinking these tuning pegs in here, but I just wanted to go ahead and show you all. I'm making it's the first uh, V profile neck I've made. Now I'm sort of patterning this off of a Boucher banjo. Most people think of William Boucher banjos as having that fancy scroll peg head. Well, he did a lot that were just square. He did a lot that were bifurcated like that. Um, on the banjo database, they refer to that as a rabbit eared, but I like I, I think it's bifurcated. Archaeology terminology coming through there. But he made a lot that were just kind of square like this one. And there's one in there that, that kind of looks like this. I did a simplified version of what he did up here and little notches down here. Just real pretty banjo. Um, I'll link to the database like I said. But I just wanted to show y'all how I did this. Um, did, did pretty pretty happy with it. Pretty nice job so far. Um, you'll see I did the two, just the plain two old wood screws in here and a separate oak dowel stick that I, that I drove into the heel there. And, you know, a lot of old banjos have this. Actually, to be honest, most that I've seen. What's better is to do the little wooden wedge through here. And what Boucher did a lot of times was he uh, sank a piece of wire through here. Sometimes here, too. That's a smaller piece of dowel that goes in there. That's some, my end pin there. But it's real sturdy. It doesn't wobble. Um, and you can probably see... I've achieved neck angle, so I've got a slight couple degrees of neck angle back there. And boy, this is just going to be a whopper of a, of a minstrel 1850s kind of style banjo like you see. So anyhow, I don't want to talk y'all's ear off about it. It's, it's maybe not too much to look at yet, but this is the update of what I'm working on. Um, I'm going to stain it and oil it and wax it and get a nice Jeff Menzies Jamaican goat hide on here and tack it down, put a nice bone nut up here probably, and, uh, and then you'll see it again. So thanks for looking guys, thanks for uh, all your contributions, helping me keep this work going. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please do let me know down below. And uh, thanks for looking.